First things first, Tony, happy birthday for yesterday. Did you, did you have a nice day? Take some time off? Get anything to pay nice presents? Um, oh, a lot of questions there. Um, it was a day off for the team, yeah, so it was nice to relax. Um, yeah, I just I did a pretty normal day to be honest. Went for dinner with the family last night, and um, yeah, presents. I tell people I don't want presents to be honest. It's I'd rather not have presents, but um, well, especially when the family buy me. I know I'm buying them ultimately, <laughs> <laughs> so so no, no, no presents. <laughs> but uh, I'd have to say my friends and and some of my colleagues were very um, very generous in there. In their birthday uh, present giving. Thank you. All right, let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk about football. Yeah. Um, uh, Greg was our last time out. Um, you've spoken before about Joe Bellingham wanting to give it a bit of a break if you yeah. can. Um, are you in a position now where you can do that? I mean, he's playing really well, so to be tempted to leave him in. Yeah, I think I think so. I think he's had a, a break in this international. Break. He um, he didn't he didn't go away with the international team and um, so yeah he's he's looked really good in training in the last few days. I, I think I, you can evidently see how sharp the lads the first couple of days Monday Tuesday this week. Obviously the international players, the Irish players and um, the other players that are away. Uh, Nectar, for instance, was away in Saudi Arabia and uh, one or two others, but. The players who had taken a few days off previous week were really sharp in training this week, and so um, yeah, hopefully we'll see the benefit of a fit, athletic, sharp, mentally bright football team in the weeks coming up. Have you got any difficulties at the at the back? Because it was quite a changed back line last time, and I think it's Ballard injured now. Is is second fit? What, would you have to shuffle things around again? Um. Sirkin's not fit to answer that, that question, hasn't been training. Ballard trained today, but, but you know, managed his training really. We have to see if there's any reaction, see whether he trains tomorrow and see whether he comes with us to Plymouth. But um, Trey thankfully came through his games with Ireland um, and Luco 9 just keeps rolling on, so uh, his suspension's finished, so um, yeah. We'll be okay. Whatever we have to pick, you know, whether whether Dan doesn't make it, as I said, Dennis isn't going to make it, but we'll we will uh, find a way, I'm sure. And Ashish and Mayanda look pretty good when they came on. Are they both pushing pushing to start now, or, or are you happy with them coming on and making an impact like that? Yeah, I, I think. Listen, the more players you've got that you believe can help the team win football matches, the better better chance of doing that you've got. I think. Um, it's a decision really and the good thing for us is a three game week there's you know there's nine points for us to shoot for this week and um, when players get fit and help the team with uh, with good performances then it gives you the more confidence to in the three game weeks to be able to move things around and, and give uh, other players opportunity and I'm sure that's what we'll do this week and um, try and keep everybody fit, everybody engaged, everybody believing that they've got opportunity to play in the team and um, and if we can keep winning whilst we're doing that then it'll be a benefit for us. Alright, thanks man. Cheers. Look at Plymouth Tony, in some ways they're, they're sort of treading the path that you guys tread last season in coming up from League One, but in many ways what Sunderland did last season was the exception rather than the norm coming out of League One. And, they're not in the bottom three. I mean, it feels like they're doing okay so far. Mm, they've had some big results. There's some good results, particularly at home. They've had some big results. They scored six against Norwich. Drew three three with Middlesbrough. Beat Blackburn three nil. You know, Blackburn are a top team. It's um, yeah. They've had some really good results at home, particularly and scored lots and lots of goals. I think they're in the top three in goals scored in this division. So um, we have to be very mindful that they can give you lots of problems when they're on the ball. They've lost probably too many goals for their liking, but um, you know, if as you look at the game, you would think there's going to be goals in it because they, they score a lot of goals at home and um, our record away from home is OK. And so, um, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge of it. It's, it's um, for me, I haven't been to Plymouth for, for lots of years, to be honest, but um, I know it's a very difficult place to go and 
and get a result. Um, yeah, and, and their results suggest that they're good. I've been, I've been watching them this week. They're, you know, I, I think they've got some good players and they've got some good wide attackers. They play the ball through the lines well. They transition well from defensive position to attacking very quickly and uh, they're a dangerous team so we have to be mindful of all of those things and um, if we're at our best hopefully we can go there and give them some problems. Um, it's it's a long trip which for you guys you, you're used to it but sometimes it's, it's probably easy to take things like the fans making this trip for granted. It's a long way isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a ridiculous long way it's, uh, but um, you know it's not easy to, to get down that that side of the country as well, down that, down that west side, right at the bottom of it. It's um, you know, even if you, you're taking direct motorways down south, you still have to get across the west side. And, then, and um, yeah, so for the supporters, it's you know we have to. This is why I've already mentioned to the players, you know, we have to find a performance at the weekend. The supporters will come. We know they'll come, and um, and they will expect a performance and, and hopefully a result. We'll, um, we can't guarantee a result, but we can guarantee hard work and, and hopefully the quality that we bring and uh, make sure that we, we find the best version of ourselves at the weekend for the people who you know, make a, a, a huge commitment to, to make that trip all their miles. Um, Barney Mungo's been doing very well yeah. for them, obviously started his career here. Um, now, the reason he's not here is nothing to do with anybody who currently works for the football club, but um, what do you make of him? Well, he looks exciting, he looks sharp and um, you know, he's a goal threat, he, he, can, he can score and assist. He's, um, as I said earlier on, I think the wide attackers are, are a real threat. They've got good good rotations with their full-backs and their midfield players who, who work the ball out wide and um, yeah. The evidence is there. That as I, said, I think they're, they're third in the league for goals scored, or fourth or something like that for goals scored. They, they're a real, you know, danger um, attacking. As I said, they've lost probably too many goals for their liking, but um, it suggests it's going to be an open game and a game where um, there'll be some goals. Hopefully, we've got to try and come out on top in, in, in that aspect and. Um, Hopefully our, our top players perform well on the day and we um, we come out on top in what I'm sure will be a good football match. That's the international break's over with for a while now. Um, obviously it's sort of everyone gets their head down now, um, but do you think the table is, has, has taken shape yet or is it is it still doing that in terms of who's where in the, in the league? Well, it's still very tight I think, isn't it? It's um, I think some of the teams that you thought might have started to come have started to come. They are, you know, they're edging towards it. So Leeds, who, who started indifferently, but have found their feet. Southampton, who started indifferently, have found their feet. Obviously, the top two have. Um, they keep rolling on despite, you know, Leicester lost the last two. I'm not sure, you know, Ipswich uh, are doing well still and. Um, yeah, we just have to stay in there. West Brom are starting to come. They're winning some football matches. You know, it's we have to just be competitive as we are. I think in every game and see as see where it takes us. We've got to you know really focus in every match to try and pick up points. And um, I think it's really tight. From you know, I don't know where you could say third or fourth, right down to thirteenth or fourteenth. It's you know, there's not many points in it, and that's why you've got to concentrate every game. Got to. Um, Try and bring your best version of yourselves, and that's what we will do this week in three tough games. Um, last one to go back to the first question. Um, happy birthday! Age is just a number, but I wonder, does working on a day-to-day -day basis with such a young squad help keep you young at heart? Oh, it might do. Um, listen, they're a good set of professional. You know, whether whether you. 18 or 28 or 38, I think you've got to be a good human being, you've got to <clears throat> know what's right and know what's wrong, you've got to show levels of respect to the coaching staff and you know, put a lot of time in after they've long gone home, the staff are still here preparing the next sessions and watching the opposition and working on the, working on the patterns of play that we try and produce and, um, and I think they're, they are generally good human beings who accept that we're working hard, accept that the coach can only pick 11 on any given match day and you've got to work hard to try and um, you know, force yourself into that starting 11 if you can. Um, um, 
but yeah, I enjoy working with them. And um, like anything, at your workplace, if there's good people, you can have some banter with, you can enjoy a cup of tea with, you can have conversations with, you can ask about their families, see how life's going. It's nice, it's a good place to come to work. It's, um, it's not full of, um, which you know, throughout a, a 20 odd year managing career, you can have some people who have agendas of their own and not happy, they're not playing, they, everything's not right, why are we training here, what are we doing that, we should have this day off, why are we coming in at the weekend, blah, blah, blah. It, it's, um, you know, they can drag the team down, they can drag players down and, and, and staff down, but uh, this club we've generally got really good young pros who want to be better and learn and get better every day and um, and as a coach that's all you can ask of them really so we, it, it, for me at this age it's enjoyable yeah thank you, thank you. what's the plan with Chris Wheeler and you expect to have him back around um, obviously they're out so um, he won't be coming this weekend He's, he hasn't been in training today for instance so um, and whenever he gets back, and I'm not 100% sure, that there's every chance he'll be back involved with the group training starting next week. And we've got a game Wednesday and we'll see how he is and see how he feels and see how much the travelling's taken out of him or the game time. And um, yeah, he'll just drop back into training with the team and we'll see how he is. I know we've talked about this a lot the last year or so, but it says everything about him really, doesn't it? 16-year-old, you'll welcome him back with open hands, mm. get him back involved as, as quickly as possible. Yeah. He deserves it. He's not, you know. I, I genuinely have said it many times now. I don't. A lot of young players come and train with us, and they're very talented and they're good. You know, Riggs just a little bit special, I think. With his, and, I, and I put that down to whilst he's got lots of talent, he's got an amazing personality and amazing attitude, and um, which sets him aside a little bit. You know, he's got no fear of coming and training with the first team and, and actually engaging and competing and. Um, and he, his place in the squad is warranted. Uh, delighted that he went away for the World Cup, a great experience for him. But he has to come back and um, as quickly as he can integrate back into training and get himself um, back in competition to try and get in the starting team. Just ask about Bradley Dack, and obviously he's been backing around the last few games. How, how is his fitness in general now, and how close is he to what you mm. deem to be fully fit, sharp, you know, yeah. seeing the best of him? Starting to get there, I think. You know, we've had lots of conversations about that. Really, you know, whether it's putting him on the pitch and trying to give him minutes, and yet, you know, the minutes in the last couple of first team games he played, there wasn't a big influence on the game. He, you know, we've worked really hard in training with him. Played the other day in the game out here against Blackpool. Um, yeah, he's getting there, I think, and he understands he, it's it's hard work. There's no shortcuts. It's um, we're not a club who who um, are waiting for him really to he, he has to do it in training every day and he's got an amazing attitude you know I, I talk about good people good human beings he is an amazing guy to be honest who, who, who wants to help the young players who works really hard in training he's had some injuries he's, it's really tough really I, I can see the mental battles to keep driving keep running keep pushing you know if you a scenario of you you you're playing a game, you're building up, you've had some touches, you get around the box and then some young player makes a stupid decision, gives it away and you have to run back 70 yards. You can see sometimes the experienced players will shake their head, throw their arms in the air and oh, walk back and yet Daki, you can see he's giving everything he's got, he's engaged in it and he's trying to um, get himself up to the level he knows he has to be at if he's going to compete to get in this team. and. Um, and that's good for us that there's such good competition because uh, there's been spells in his career where he would walk into a team as soon as he was fit. You know, in, in, in Blackburn, at Blackburn, he, um, you know, he was getting man of the match every single game. Really, it was embarrassing at some stages. He must have had, he used to get a watch, I think, when they got man of the match off a local jeweller. He must have had hundred of them. <laughs> but, um, but my point being. I think you know his personality is he knows he has to work really really hard to get in this team and um, but he will become an option that as as we try to as the season deepens in and we we do play three game weeks he will impact the team and hopefully score some goals and help the team win matches. Just one more for me. This last couple of weeks, 
be the first time you've had all four strikers in training together, is it? Fully fit since they come in. How, how's that been? How have they been in general to work off each other? Will that benefit them all in the long run or should it? Well, they're all a bit different, I would have to say. You know, they're. Um, but yeah, we can do drills with the forwards these days. You know, we've had plenty of times over the last year or so where we haven't had any forwards to do drills with, and now when we do attacking drills, we uh, we're hoping that they can get between the sticks and finish things off and score goals. So, um, as I said to you last week, really, they they are generally, apart from Russell, who's 25, I think he just turned. They are pretty young boys, really, and they're still learning the game. It's, you know, you don't stop every session every time you see him. Just make like Hamia make one run across the front post where he, he keeps going and he cannot score. He's gone past the post. You, you would want to stop the session, show him that's why everything, every training session gets videoed by drones, and then the coaches will show him after the, after, after the session. You have to make double movements. You can't keep running past the near post. How are you going to score when you've gone five, ten yards past the near post and the ball's coming in? You you can't score. You have to run, stop, back off, let the ball beat the defender. You've got to be in positions on the pitch to score. And so, it, that's for me. It's just a learning process. Young players trying to teach them. Keep repeating the drills. Keep telling them. Keep reminding. But you can't stop the session every time the player you're working with makes a bad decision you've got to keep the session rolling and that's why you video sessions and uh, you go through the footage when they, uh, after they've had their lunch and you sit them down and show them what they could have done better.